Hey everyone, it's Anthony from Pretty Print It here. In today's video, I'll be talking about how to use JSON Web Tokens with Django REST Framework. So if you don't know about JSON Web Tokens, I'll explain those in a moment. But first, I just have to mention that on my website, prettyprinted.com, you can sign up for a free Django Database Essentials course. It has about two hours of video that covers pretty much anything you need to know about working with the models in Django. So you can check that out on my website, prettyprinted.com. And there's going to be a link in the description below as well. So to use JSON Web Tokens, first it helps to understand what JSON Web Tokens are. And they're basically a way for you to verify some information without using a, a database. So normally when you use tokens for something like API authentication, you would actually save the token on the database. And when that token changes, then you update it in the database. But with JSON Web Tokens, you don't have to use a database for anything because the way to encode and decode the tokens is public. So here on the JSON Web Token site, jot.io, you can see here on the right hand side the data inside of the token. So this number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero, a name, John Doe, and an IAT in this number here, which is basically a date. And then on the left hand side you can see the token representation. So if I change the name to something else, you'll see how the token on the left hand side changes just like that. And you can see down here that the signature is verified, meaning that this token is valid. So if you have the secret when generating the token, then you can validate if anybody sends you that same token back. And that way you don't have to verify on the database. And if they change one little character, so let me find this I, if I change this I to a J, you see how it immediately switches to invalid signature. So the data inside of the token is always open to be read, but if you modify it, then you will alert the person who created the token. So that's the advantage. So of course you don't want to put any sensitive data inside of the token, but as far as authentication information, normally the stuff that you will put in the token is pretty safe. And when I generate the token in my project, I'll show you how the data is stored in there. So to use JSON Web Tokens with the Django REST framework, we need to install an extension. And this is called Simple Jots or Simple JWT. And to install it, you just install Django REST Framework underscore Simple JWT. So I'll go ahead and do that. So install Django REST Framework underscore Simple JWT. Okay, so it's installing. And you'll see how it's very easy to use this. And as you can imagine, it's just as easy to use as using Django REST Framework itself. So just gonna wait a moment for this to install. It's pretty quick to install. And then once it's done, I need to update the settings that I have. So for my app, I'm going to go to the settings file and I'm going to go down to the REST framework dictionary that I have here from the last video. So you can see the default permission class is still there. So now I'm dealing with authentication. So with authentication, I'll be using Django REST framework or Django REST framework simple jot. So I need to specify the default authentication classes. So let me just make sure it's done installing. It's still installing, but it's okay that it's not done because I still have to write a little bit of code. So here I'm going to pass a tuple of strings that represent the available authentication classes. So in this case, I only want one, which is simple jot. So rest underscore framework underscore simple JWT dot authentication and then I believe it is JWT authentication so capital J capital T and then there we go I think it's like that and then with that I should have it enabled on my app so it's still installing it shouldn't take that long it's really not that big of a package but I'll go ahead and wait and with that I have the JWT authentication available to be used in my Django REST framework app. So now I'll go to URLs and with URLs, I need to modify something as well because if I have JSON web tokens available to be used, then I need a way for the users to actually get them because you can't use the token in any of your requests to the API without getting the token in the first place. So this extension allows you to create two endpoints one will allow you to get a token for the first time and the second will allow you to refresh that token so you can get a new one. So if 
I do that here in my URL patterns. What I'm going to do first is import a couple of classes. So from rest underscore framework underscore simple JWT dot views, I'm going to import two classes. So one is token obtain pair view, and then the other is token refresh view. And by pair, it means the pair of tokens, one is an access token and one is a refresh token. So when your access token expires, then you'll use the refresh one to get a new access token. So that's why it's a pair, because you get two tokens. And then you're going to create two new URLs, uh, one to get the token and one to refresh the token. So the documentation recommends API slash token. This can be whatever you want, of course, but just to keep it simple, we'll stick with that. So API token slash refresh will be the other one. And then what I want to do is I want to add in two views. So token obtain pair view as view for the first one. And then the second one is going to be token refresh view as view. And these are classes, so that's why I have to use the as view there. So once I have that, I actually have everything that I need to use JSON Web Token. So I really only had to add one line to the settings and then import a couple of things and then add two more URLs. And that's it. I can use it now. So using it on the front end doesn't work quite as well anymore. So let me show you what I mean by that. And I need to get into the right directory. So uh, API example, and then I'll start at my server. And we see that I can't get the details here. Okay, so it's telling me that I'm locked out. I need to provide my authentication credentials. But if I were to log in using this again, log in, I still can't see it. And the reason why I can't see it is because I changed the default authentication class. The default, the actual default is simple login, which allows you to use this login like we did in the last video. But because I'm using JSON Web Tokens now, I can only authenticate myself with JSON Web Tokens. If I don't use JSON Web Tokens, then I won't be able to see the information in my API. So to get the token, the first thing I need to do is send a request to the endpoint that I created. So remember, if I go back to URLs, I have API slash token. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in the URL here. So I'm using Postman. Postman is a tool to send requests. And it's pretty easy to use because it's so visual. So there is my URL and then API slash token. Okay. So if I send, what happens is method get not allowed. And the reason why method get is not allowed is because it only accepts post requests. So I'll change this to post request. I'll send again. And now it's telling me that a username and password field are required. So I need to supply the username and password. So using Postman to do that, I'll go to body. And then I'll use this second form URL encoded. And this is basically mimicking the type of form that you will have if you typed it into a browser. And then you supply the username as a key and the password as a key. So this is something that the consumer of your API would do. And I pass in the username, which is Anthony, and the password is password11 with a capital P. So now when I send this, I get this result. So you can see here it is now two things. I have a refresh token and I have an access token. So with these things, I can actually view something from my API. So what I'll do over here is I'll create a new request. And I'll use paradigms. So get paradigms. And this is slightly wrong. There we go. And you see how it says authentication credentials were not provided. And those authentication credentials are this token. So first what I'll do is I'll take the token here, copy it, and I'll go to jot.io and I'll paste it in here. So now we can see here on the right hand side, it tells me some information. It tells me the token type access, uh, JTI, so some kind of, oh, this is a date, yeah. So this represents the date, the expiration, and the user ID represents the user ID in my system of Anthony. 
and it's telling me that it's an invalid signature probably because I have something cut off. So let me just try copying that again and seeing if I can get it to display correctly. It's probably because um, I'm copying and pasting from Postman instead of typing it directly. Let's try the other token. Okay, so both are invalid, but then again, the token only lasts for a moment. So let me try sending again and then getting the access token and pasting it here. Okay, still. Well, I'll ignore the invalid signature here. Oh, the reason why the signature is invalid because I'm not signing it in the same way. So if I change this to secret, okay, yeah, there we go, signature verified. So depending on how you sign the token, then you will get a different verify for each method of signing the token. So just know that JSON Web Tokens, uh, this website has one way, and then the extension simple JSON Web Tokens has a certain way of doing it. And of course, if you're only working with the API directly, then you don't have to worry about that. It was a little different because I'm using this little tool here to see inside the token. But anyway, the JTI is just some other token inside of the token that's used internally in simple JWD. So now that I have that, I can actually perform a request using this token. So I'll go here, and remember it says authentication credentials were not provided. So to provide them, I'll click here on the authorization tab, and for type, I'll go to bearer token because that's what it is. And I'll paste the bearer token in there. And then when I send the request, I can see the data. So now if I want to do anything, if I, if I want to add a new um, let's see, where is it? Raw, JSON. If I want to add a new paradigm, I can do that. So, uh, name is going to be, see, functional, procedural, object oriented, and let's say, uh, recursive. I don't think that's an actual paradigm, but I can't think of anything else. So I'll send that and it allows me to add it because I have the authorization token there. And then if I go back to Git and get everything, I can see the, the list. And if I change one character in this token, so I just deleted some random character in there, and if I send, it now gives me this information telling me that the access token is invalid or expired. So now what I want to do is I want to show you the way to get the updated token when the original token expires, you use refresh. So this is how you use refresh. First, I'll copy it, and then I'll go here, and I will type in the URL for the refresh endpoint. So 8,000 API token slash refresh. And then for, it's going to be a post request, and then the body is going to be that form URL encoded again. And the key is going to be refreshed, and the value is going to be the token. So if I send that, it gives me a new access token here. Then I can take this access token and put it here and get the list of things in my database from my API. So fairly straightforward. So now what I want to show you how to do is how to use this using requests because it's pretty much the same thing. It's just instead of using a tool, I'll be writing code. So I'll create a simple file here in my project. Let's see new file. Uh, I'll name this send.py. And with this, I'm going to import requests. So I think I need to install requests. So let me do that. Pip and install requests. And that will just install in the background. And then I'm just going to use requests in the normal way. So first I'll create headers and because I'm writing code, I have to specify the headers directly. So the headers is just going to be a dictionary. The first and only header that I need is authorization. And then the value is going to be bearer. So B-E-A-R-E-R -E -R with a capital B space and then the token. So if I go back to Postman, I can just copy the token that I have here and put it into my code just like that. And that's going to pass that token along. And then I can send the request. So request, get, 
and then same endpoint uh, paradigms. I feel like I spell paradigm wrong. There we go. And then I need to pass in the headers. So headers equals headers, just like that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to print our dot text. So let's see if request is done installing. It is. So now I'll simply run this file. So the file is send. So python send.py. And we see the list of paradigms here. So this is just printing out the results here. And if I change one thing about the token, so I'll just remove this leading E and I'll try sending it again. I now get this error message telling me that the token is invalid. If I put that E back, it should start working again. And there we go. So you see I can use this in requests or I can use a tool or whatever you use to send requests, it's pretty similar. I'm assuming that if you know how to send requests, then you know a little bit about how they work. So you can just use it in whatever way that you think is necessary for your application. So that's really all I wanted to cover for this video. I hope that you understand how you can use JSON Web Tokens a little more. This extension makes it so easy to use because you barely have to do anything. I think I added like three or four lines of code to get all that extra functionality, which is pretty nice. So if you have any questions about this, you can always leave a comment down below. And like I said, if you haven't signed up for my free course, Django Database Essentials, you can check that out on my website or click the link in the description below. So thank you for watching this video and I will talk to you guys next time.